Okay, so let's talk about SQL updates, right? You you have to um, you got to get data into the database. We're not just selecting information. We want to get data in there, and we've already learned one way to do that. What statement did we learn about last time as a way to get data into the database? The insert into. Now, what um, insert into is adding new data, like a brand new record, right, to a table is when we use insert into. So if that's what insert into does, what do you think update does? It just changes. changes existing data. It's not a brand new record. It's just changing it. It, it may be do new data for that record. Um, like I think the what I gave you on the quiz was you had to insert into a table, maybe the customer's table, but you were only inserting two fields, right? Was it name and city? Is that what I said? Um, so if we think about the customer's table that we're using here on this website, there are other fields, right? There's also address and country and that sort of stuff. So my update may be putting, maybe I added myself to the customer's table. So Jamie and Sharpsburg is in there. Um, but now I'm going to go back and I'm going to add the address. Even though the address field was null before and I'm adding, I'm adding the first value to the address field, that would still be an update because I'm not adding a brand new record. I'm not adding a new row to that table, right? I'm just updating an existing row to that table. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's the difference between insert into and update. And um, there's another term that I also refer to use called upsert, where upsert. basically it's either if this information already exists, then update it. If it does not exist, then create it. Okay. And um, I, I guess I would be curious to know which, do you know how to spell that? U-P-S-E-R-T? I, so. I would be curious to know, is that a, is that a specific, so Upsert and Salesforce, for example, has that. I, I don't know if that's um, Upsert to insert or update Microsoft Dataverse. Um, it's not, it's not a... It's not a SQL command that I'm familiar with. Um, so it might like here, here it is in Salesforce, upsert. So it's a command inside Salesforce, which is a product that I don't really know much about, but um, it's a unique command inside that product. There is a MySQL upsert, it looks like. MySQL is another database. So the database that I've had the most experience with, the databases I've had the most experience with are Oracle and uh, SQL Server. And if there is one in there, I've just never used it, right? If we had to, if, if, if SQL Server is what I've used more than anything else. So if we were going to do like an upsert type thing to see whether the record existed or not, I'd have to do something on my end in the code that I'm writing to check for the record first. And then if it wasn't there, then I would insert it versus update it. So, but that's a handy command. Uh, I like that. Um, and let's just see. I'm just curious. Upsert SQL Server. Upsert command SQL Server. That don't exist. Um, and updates the rows that do exist. Sufficient to do a SQL 2003 standard, SQL Server 2008. There it is. Hey, it's there. Through, oh, they introduced it through the merge command. So they call it merge in SQL Server. All right, cool. So, yeah, I, I thought there might be a different name, but even merge, I don't remember ever using merge. Is merge on here? Let's see. Just curious. Merge. <laughs> Upsert. Nope. Interesting. All right. So yeah, I'd have to do some more research on that. But that's uh, I like that idea. There's definitely been there there've definitely been times that that would have been handy. Um, all right. So let's talk about update. The basic construction of the command is we're going to update table name. That sort of that kind of looks like um, insert into, right? Insert into table name comes first. Um. With insert into, did everybody get that you needed to do open close parentheses? That was the missing blanks on your command there around your column name. So you've got the open close parentheses for the column names. Here's the other place that we've learned to use com commas, right? When we're listing out the column names in the insert command. And then you had the values keyword followed by open close parentheses that where you listed your values there. That's how we did insert. With update, there's no parentheses. With update, you say table name, set, and then you don't list your columns separately from your values like you do with insert into. You list your columns 
column name equals, and then whatever the value is you're going to set it to. Um, now, this is important. We don't have this where condition when we do the insert into. Why is the where condition necessary for the update statement or, or useful for the update statement? If you think about inserting new records versus updating existing ones, why do we need a where? Yeah, right. If I'm going to update Jamie Walker's record and I'm going to set the address for Jamie Walker, then I got to have a where statement that says where name equals Jamie Walker, right? I got to have something like that to identify that specific record that I'm updating. Yes. So isn't that what the set is? It's like set column one address. Nope. So let's think about that a second. So set is set is just saying for this table name. Let's take customers for example. For customers, for uh, for table customers, I'm going to set column city equal to Noonan, okay? Or, or in my case, I'm going to set address equal to 125 Bloomfield Way, right? If I just say that and I don't put a where statement on there and I run that command, it's going to update every single record in that table with that new address name. Uh, that address value. Does that make sense? But then if I say where name equals Jamie Walker, then it's going to only update my uh, address. Okay. So it does say be careful um, about the where clause. If you if your where clause returns more records than you expected it to return, you will be updating more records than you intended to. Right. Um, if you omit the where clause, all records in the table will be updated. So sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes for whatever reason you want to update every single record in the table. Maybe you've changed the way that your system works and you need to update everything. And, uh, and that's exactly what you want it to do is update every record. But usually there's some where clause that narrows down the list of records you're updating. Would you be able to update customer ID? Customer ID would probably one be once. Is this a primary key? It's going to be locked down where we could change that. We could try that, right? Let's see. Um, we're updating customers. The, the, the one that they have in here is uh, the contact name and, and Frankfurt where customer ID equals one. So if we look at that, um, if we look at customers, let me see if I can open that in a new, of course it's not gonna let me. All right, so customers, here's all the customers that are there. I should have, oh, it's still here. All right, so, I know it's not going to let me update one and change it to an existing number, right? So let's just prove that. We're going to update. We're going to update customers, um, and we're going to set customer ID. Customer ID equal to two, where customer ID is equal to one, right? That's going to fail because we've already got a customer ID too. So we try to run that. Ooh, error. Could not execute statement due to a con due a, to a constraint failure unique constraint failed so it complained about it not because it was a primary key field but it complained about it because it's a unique field so we tried to put a value in there that there's already existing value so if we look at customers again let me copy this and let's go to the last record which is uh no oh it, it saved it from our last session that's cool so the last record is 103 so we're going to try to change one oh we'll just we'll try to change record number one here to 104 all right, so let's see, update customer's ID to 104, where customer ID equals one. We run that, it didn't mind. So yeah, it doesn't, it didn't care. Um, so now if I show my customer's table, sure enough, 104 is down there at the bottom. So I'm gonna take it back and we're gonna, we're gonna change that back. So we're gonna set customer ID to one, where it's now 104, run that again. Then look at our customers table, and now we're back to that. Um, and you created a, I think a gap last time than the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, where so would you be able to uh, update the value to where it's within that gap? Um, well, did it leave the gap in there? Yeah, there is a gap right here. You're right. So we've got a gap from 93 to 100, right? So we do, that should work. So update customer ID one to be 94. Run that. Yep, no trouble. There, if I look at it, 94 should be this uh, dude with the weird name, Alfred's 
Fodder Kiss, right? His mama didn't like him very much. Um, so 94, we'll change that back to 1 where it was 94. All right, so yeah, it seems to be that the only the only constraint there is it just can't be a number that's already existing, right? I, what I'm not positive about is the way other databases would work, and maybe even th this one seems to behave like SQL Server does. Um, this is this is you know it told us at the beginning that this is the Microsoft North Northwinds database over here, so I'm guessing that this is based on SQL Server or, or SQL Server behind the scenes. Um, but there may be settings that you can put on that field that won't allow a user to update that field directly. So there may be some database settings that you could configure that would not allow us to do that. Um, that's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing here, so I'm not positive. But it's like anything else with programming. If you're, if you're actually using this in a real world scenario, what are you gonna do? You're gonna do what I just did. You're gonna try it, see if it works, and then you'll know whether or not you can use that in your system, right? All right. Um, a lot of your learning just is just going to come from playing around with stuff, right? That's why I said as you're reading through the SQL Server stuff, take the time to try it yourself and mess with the values and see if you can do something differently like we just did. Um, now this one here, because it says where customer ID is one, we know that it's going to update how many fields? Nice. Only one. Why do we know that? Because customer ID is what type of field? What did, we, what, I, what did I draw on the board earlier? I drew two types of key fields. It is a primary key. And if it's a primary key, that means we're guaranteed that it's unique in that particular table, right? And so we know there are not going to be any other records with customer ID equals one. So if I use the primary key, I'm guaranteed I'm only going to update that one record. So often when you're updating single records, this is the easiest field to use because you know it's going to be unique, right? You don't run the risk of accidentally updating the wrong, wrong one. If I said update where the customer name equals Alfred's Futterkist, what if there's another mom that didn't like her son and named her son Alfred Futterkist too, right? We have two of these guys as our customers. So um, that's gonna be, you're gonna need to use something so that you make sure you've narrowed it down to just the one record that you're trying to update. But like we said, sometimes you want to update multiple records and that's what this particular um, SQL statement is doing right here um, if we try this one if we look at our customers table and we look for all the instances of one it says there are none okay why would it tell me that when it wants me to update oh con yeah contact name that's on here contact name there are no one contact names really it's strange that it would give us that update statement. So if that's true, then when I try to run this guy, it's going to say no records updated. Rows affected five. What? How is that the case? Uh, well, did you change every country, uh, every person's country from Mexico to one? Or, or does that mean... Oh, you're right. I changed the contact. It was the other direction. I was looking at the wrong way. That's right. So we were good. Good catch. Good catch. Uh, that's that's worth being on the board. Um, so Levi got first extra point today. Um, yeah, it was the other direction, right? I t I totally overlooked that. It's updating customers and setting the contact name to one. Because, you know, for this particular region, for Mexico, we've now appointed this new guy named Juan. He has no last name. He's just Juan. Has anybody seen those those uh, online videos? But I can't remember the guy's name. His name is Juan. And he does, uh, and it's just kind of like quick little funny skits that he does. I like that. And uh, so there's, there's this one scene from where he's got the, uh, who's the guy? Who's the guy that played, that did the voice of Aslan in uh, Chronicles of Narnia? Um, um. Liam Neeson, right? So, so it's got the movie Taken, a line from the movie Taken that Liam Neeson's in, and where he's like, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to find you. I'm, I'm going to hunt you down and find you. Have you just guys seen that? He goes, uh, <laughs> he goes, who is this or something like that? He goes, it's one. He goes, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to find you. It's not one. <laughs> so that's what I think of every time I hear one now. But yeah, you're right. We updated every every record that had a country set to Mexico, we updated the contact name to be one. So now, if we look at these records, 
we should see Juan all over, yeah, in five different places, right? So there he is. Juan's a very popular guy now. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, it's, uh, this probably isn't allowed, right? They, they need to update it now. This is not culturally, this is culturally insensitive. Um, but, all right, so... Uh, Sometimes I think the stink that people make over particular things, it's like, I don't know that people are really offended by that, like you're claiming that they are, you know. Um, but anywho. Well, three people that are actually offended. Right. We're going to change everything. We're going to drop. And I'm not going there. Never mind. I'm not going to touch that. Yes. There's not. So it's important with the update that you make sure you did the update you wanted to do. Um, if I accidentally updated that data, um, it almost seems like there have been scenarios where some databases provide sort of an undo option, right? Just undo the changes that I just made, um, kind of like a one level undo. It could be that maybe that was a crazy dream I had. I don't know. Um, but if, if these changes have been made, I'm probably, and I need to go back to the previous state, I'm probably calling my database guys and saying, hey, when's the last time we took a snapshot of this table? Can we roll the whole database back to yesterday at 3 p.m.? Because I just overrode a bunch of records accidentally. You know, so I'm, I'm do, and there's going to be loss of data. I'm probably going to have to do something where I, I grab specific data right now, tell them to roll, roll back, and then the information I did that was updated since 3 o'clock yesterday that I needed to still be there, I'm gonna, then I'm going to have to run the process of updating all of that information except for the one that I mistakenly updated, right? So that's a big deal. <laughs> so you need to... Yeah, that's right. That's right. Exactly. Welcome to the world of programming, right? It's like, it's when you... I've had a couple of instances like that in my programming career where <laughs> I remember there's one guy in particular uh, that I used to work with, great, really smart guy. And uh, it was late one night and, and somebody needed us to do something. He and I were maybe the only ones there still working and um, they needed something done. And he was, <laughs> he was like, okay, he's trying to really be helpful. And he, and he goes in to run some process and he's like, should I do this? And I'm like, man, I don't know. That's going to affect a lot of people, you know? And he goes, and, and in particular, it was going to affect the guy that was like the head guy over our group was like, who was like over, you know, um, at that time, I don't know, he probably had a thousand employees or more that answered to him. So he was way up there in the company. And, uh, and <laughs> the guy specifically said, John, this guy I worked with, he said, he said, Hey, he puts his pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. Booby hits enter, and then the phone calls started coming in, <laughs> including that guy. And he was like, "What is what is going on? How did this happen?" And all this. And John's like, "Okay, I'm never going to say that again." <laughs> uh, but it was that kind of scenario, right? We thought everything was cool. We had thought of all the possibilities, and we updated the information, and it did way more than we thought it was going to do. Um, so yeah. You, you have to, there's a lot of checks and balances in there to make sure that you're not doing something that, um, that is irreversible like that. Uh, be careful. In fact, that's the next, well, this is the whole, if you omit the where clause, all records will be updated. You know, I would add to that. Be careful. If your where clause is incorrect, you will update the incorrect records, right? So um, selects are, if you're going to play around with the database, selects are a much safer way to kind of play around and see what's, what's in there and understand how to do stuff. Once you start updating and inserting into information, especially if it's a database that's shared by thousands of employees, you know, it, it gets kind of, uh, it gets kind of scary sometimes. Um, but now, uh, like this, for example, update customers set contact name equal to one. If I do that, what is going to happen? Every single record now is going to have the contact. One's going to be the contact. Um, that's where that's where Juan's gonna go. It's not Juan, right? Don't call me. I'm not the contact name. But every single record would have that um, would have that contact name. So just be aware that uh, updates powerful, updates needful, but you can do a lot of damage, right? Any questions about the update command? Main thing you need to take away, like I said at the beginning, is you do not use parentheses and list your columns first followed by your values next, right? And, and with, the, with the update command, it's the table name set, and then it's whatever your column name is equals this value, comma, your next column name equals this value. 
And then uh, in most cases, you're almost always going to have some sort of wear condition that narrows down the records that you're making this update to. All right, let's move on to an equally scary command, the delete command, right? Um, delete from table name. Now, if you omit the where clause, all records in the table will be deleted, right? So another, uh, you can do a lot of damage if your where clause is incorrect. Maybe you do one of those things like we were doing on the board a minute ago, where you say delete every record where country is not USA or country not, you know, uh, or, or not country equals Mexico. You just selected every record in that table, right? And so you got to make sure that your, the where clause that you're constructing is going to behave as you would expect it to. Did you just say delete customers and they'll just delete the entire table? Well, uh, yeah, delete from customers, almost, right? So if you leave off the where clause, all those rows are gone. The table's still there. The table architecture is still there. The same fields are still available. You can, you can then turn around and start inserting into that table, right? There's a separate command that creates a whole new table from scratch and creates the associated fields. So you haven't deleted the table, but you've deleted all the data at the table, right? It's like in your spreadsheet, you selected everything in your Excel spreadsheet and you right clicked on it and said clear. You just cleared everything out that was in there, right? Um, so yes, you're, again, you want to make sure your where clause is behaving like you would expect it to. Um, here we're going to delete this guy, Alfred's Futterkist, um, because you're reading that and you're going, surely there's no one really named that. So we're going to, that was somebody messing around. We're going to run that SQL and delete that row. And so now if I look at my customer's table, customer ID 1 is missing because that was the guy's name, right? Um, <laughs> um, I could do that, right? I could say uh, delete. Um, I could say delete from customers where customer where contact name. We could change it to contact name. And I think uh, five records were updated when we updated it to one a minute ago. So five records should disappear. And sure enough, they do. Five rows are missing. So one is no longer there. They said we were culturally insensitive, so we just got rid of the data, right? Um, let's look at, let's see what else we can talk about with delete. Where else they go with that? Delete all records. Like I said, sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes you want to start with a clean slate. And for whatever reason, you're just going to blow away all your data in your table. So delete from that table name will do that. Um, they say, hey, try it. Look at here. They're not scared. Run SQL, boom, 92 rows are affected. We check our customers table, there is nothing there. What are we going to do? We're gonna restore the database, right? This is where you call the database guys, said, hey, like I said, database information, those snapshots are not taken like continuously. So they'll have some time throughout the day, maybe once a day that they back up the databases. Some people, depending on the backup schedule, may only back up once a week. So if you do something like this and you go, I just lost all my data, can you restore the database uh, the, from the whatever the last uh, uh, backup, whenever the last backup was taken, you may be looking at data that's a day old or even older, right? So we've had to have those calls before. Reach out to a customer and go, there is a glitch in the matrix and uh, all your data is gone or was gone. So we just restored it from backup. That means we lost everything since 3 p.m. yesterday. So whatever's been put in since then, can you guys re-enter? Um, so we're going to restore the database. Now we're back to 91 customers. And uh, whichever of you guys that I stuck in there, I'm sorry, your record is gone, All right? Because well, I had to restore from the last backup. Um, let's see, what else? So that's it for delete. Delete's pretty straightforward. Any questions about update or delete and the grave danger associated with it? Insert, again, is a safer one, right? Because you're inserting a brand new record. You're not affecting any of the existing records. But when you deal with update and delete, you better make sure your where clause is correct. All right, let's move on to select top. Anybody want to guess what select top does? Does it select the first thing on my home? The first? And it actually... 
it gives you the ability to specify how much, but it's whatever your results are. Maybe I just want the top results. And often I use it exactly like you said. I will run, I'll, I'll run a query and I just want to check the first record that comes back, right? So this is a way to say, hey, return, return all the records that are in Mexico, but I only need to check the first record. But sometimes you're doing that just because you're just trying to verify that a record exists. Right. I'm still I'm trying to verify that there are some records in the database with a country of Mexico. And so what I do is I send a query to the database and say, just return me one record. Why would I say just return one? Why not? Why not return all the results to make sure it's there? But if all I need to know is that at least one exists, why not, though, just say just return them all? Then I could say, oh, I got 103 rows back. Computing power, more, more in that scenario, what I'm more concerned about is it will save me computing power, but I'm probably more concerned about the time it's going to take for that data to come back over the wire, right? Because if there's if, there, if the customer is doing a procedure and it depends on what the database returns back from that uh, request, um, it's going to take longer for it to send me back 103 results versus just sending me back one record, right? So it's it's you you, you think about stuff like that anytime you're kind of doing things over the wire. It's like just do what's absolutely necessary to get the job done, right? And so select top to only get one record is, is something that would be useful in that scenario. It does note that not all database systems support the select top clause. Um, some have different ways of doing it. MySQL says use the limit keyword instead. Um, Oracle uses fetch first, uh, first for fetch first in rows only. And row num um, are ways that um, that Oracle allows you to return just a portion of the data that's coming back um, for the purpose of this class. And, and I'll just say this for everything going forward in case I forget to say it. We're going to focus on the SQL Server version. OK, so as you're reading through here, you can glance at the Oracle one, but I'm not going to test you on the Oracle one or I'm not going to test you on the MySQL one. OK. It's good to know that they differ across databases, but for the purpose of testing, I don't want you guys to have to learn four different ways to do the same thing, right? So we're just going to focus on the SQL Server one, which is the first one that they always present to us here, um, which is, again, makes me think that they're they're using SQL Server on the back end. Um, but there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, you can say a couple of ways that you can do it. You can say a specific number when you select top, so return the top five rows or the top one row um, from my request, or you can say a percentage, give me 50%, right, of the values um, from that request or the top 1%. Um, maybe I'm running a query that's going to give everybody that's in the top 10% of my class, right, I'm going to increase, I'm going to give them five bonus points because they've worked so hard throughout the year. So I could say select the top 10%, do something like that. Um, so let's see how they might use it here. Select the top three from customers. Um, again, if I just do this, right, if I remove top three, I'm going to get these results and these results in this order. Now, we learned how to order the results. What what statement did we use to order the results? Order, order, by. order by. Is that one word? No. It's order space by, right? So that's important that you understand that. And that was on your quiz today, wasn't it? So I gave you two different, did I give you two different spaces? No, I didn't, right? You had to know to put the space in there um, because that's the way it was in the exercise on here, right? And uh, so if I return, so the order by is excluded from this. So how is it going to order these rows by default? Customer ID, it's gonna take whatever is the primary key field. That's typically what is the sort order that it's gonna to default to. 